Today's video is going to be a behind the scenes tour of some of the creations I've done, as well as showing what tools I use to create them. Now, depending if there's any questions that come through in comments afterwards, I may even do a follow up one to answer any questions. But starting out, probably one of my favorites is BB-8 down here. So BB-8 is 3D printed. It is full animatronic and effectively these domes here uh, can be unscrewed to get access to the inside, to get to the battery, to get to the switches, to get to the lighting and also control it. And inside there is a bunch of motors that will rotate the inner portion. There is a weighted disc at the bottom that will rotate with a motor that can cause it to spin. And up the top there's a stand with four neodymium magnets and the same again in the top here so effectively it's kind of magnetically held on so just showing there there's effectively one of the magnets there another there and then underneath so that enables this whole top section to be able to move on the caster wheels on top on top of the rotating ball next up is dj rex um DJ's Rex, sorry, DJ Rex, if you've ever been to either kind of Disneyland, Disney World, um, you may have been to a place called Ogre's Cantina, and Ogre's Cantina is where you'll see DJ, DJ Rex. There's another version of him uh, that is the driver of the Star Tours attraction as well. Uh, but great little guy, again, 3D printed uh, for the main body itself. There's a mixture of printing techniques here, so traditional filament printer for the majority but then I have used resin printer uh, for some of these really detailed parts here um, and that includes having to create like a clear uh, clear grill that goes inside and then LEDs behind the head effectively everything moves again um, his little stand that he's on this is made out of actual insulation foam um, I've effectively sprayed that with um, just a spray paint and I found that actually as spraying the spray paint and the primer on it started to dissolve uh, some of the foam uh, originally I thought that that was going to be a problem and it actually turned into quite a good kind of a kind of degraded steel effect um, so I could then just kind of wash it with a, a rust color and, and give it some texture and make it look really aged it's come up quite well um, it doesn't doesn't look anywhere near as good on camera as it does in person, but uh, it really does have a, a pretty good effect. The, these pieces here are just 3D printed uh, and stuck on for effects. Basically looked at the uh, pictures of the, the stand at uh, the Disney World Ogre's Canteen and then just modeled them straight off that. Following on to here is C-3PO. Uh, again, another animatronic. Uh, Effectively full movement from from hips upwards. Okay, so this weekend's work was to make C-3PO go both wireless and also to complete the base. Uh, so in the bottom is an ESP32, uh, which connected to a DF player. Uh, then using the ESP Now protocol in there, plus the four ESP32s that control all the movement in the main body. And a fifth one in a handheld controller. I can press the button. If this transport is the best, then why are we always repairing it? What do you mean you are doing all the work, you ungrateful little twit? I just about had enough of you. One, you wouldn't even have this job if it weren't for me. No, you wouldn't, so you might just show a little gratitude. You're welcome. If this transport is the best, then why are we always repairing it? What do you mean you are doing all the work, you ungrateful little twit? I've just about had enough of you. Why, you wouldn't even have this job if it weren't for me? No, you wouldn't, so you might just show a little gratitude. You're welcome. Now get back to work. Uh, another work in progress. This one's going to be a long-running one. I've got some steep learning curves to do around some machine learning, um, effectively teaching this bipedal robot to be able to walk. Um, 3D printed in this case, um, so relatively straightforward for the 3D printing. The challenge is not even necessarily the electronics on it, though that's still reasonably complex. This is part of the head alone. 
uh, effectively 5 volt transformer, an ESP32 uh, SD card reader, another 12 volt uh, controlling, just some normal serv servos. In the main body itself is running these actuators off a CAN bus. Um, so the, these will all be able to effectively walk, but you have to teach it to walk. So strapped on the front of it is an NVIDIA Jetson. Um, so you can take this thing into a simulator, try and teach it how to walk in a simulator, and then bring that sim to real. Uh, that's the area where I'm having to do a whole lot of study uh, and try and figure out how to make that work. We've made some progress, uh, but we haven't even finished the electronics on this one yet. So there's a lot of people all trying to do the same thing. Many of them are way further ahead than I am. Um, so in some cases I may follow along with others. In other cases when I have time and able to do some more study, I will press on and have a crack on my own things as well. Um, but otherwise, I can assemble it. It does look pretty much complete at that point, but it's just not fully mobile at this stage until I've taught it to walk, which is kind of cool. R2-D2, uh, C-3PO's buddy here. Um, I built it pretty much because I had C-3PO. Um, it's been going for about five months so far. I started with a bit of Hess and a Raw, probably spent about a month and a half building, and I've stopped. Um, few distractions on the way through, uh, both other projects and also life distractions. Um, I will most likely come back to it. I'm having that dilemma at the moment. Do I, do I carry on building this one or do I start something else? Do I start building a full-size Wally? I kind of want to build a full-size Wally, but at the same time I don't like leaving something that's half complete like this. Um, I am conscious that there are a number of the R2-D2s out there in circulation so it might be nice to have um, something a little bit more unique such as a Wally so we'll see um, I've even got a poll out at the moment so if you want to have your say do I complete R2-D2 so C-3PO has a friend vote for R2-D2 otherwise vote for Wally and I will start work on a full-size Wally um, I'm not saying that I'm not going to not start because I'd be lying otherwise because we're already starting to print. Um, guess one of those common questions, what printers do I have? Um, these are two of them. It's an Alagu Neptune 3 Plus. Um, so not the full Mac size, but the plus size. That's been good enough for most things for me. Not the fastest printer in the world, but it it's just a workhorse. It just keeps going and going and going. Uh, an Alagu uh, Saturn, this is the 3 Ultra. So anything I want to do with a lot of definition in it, um, I print on the resin printer. Next up in the, I guess the study workroom is a Creality K1C. I um, only had this probably about six, nine months now. Um, it's actually been really good, certainly for the price of it is, is astonishing. So it was on special when I purchased it. Um, but it is great for rapid prototyping. So if I'm designing something in CAD, want to build it, I'll go straight to here. Smaller parts are on here. Um, or things which require a bit more detail than the Elegoo Neptune that I've got, um, but not quite to the detail or resolution of a, of a resin printer. So K1C in this case has been fantastic. Um, most stuff I print in these days is PETG, uh, P-E-T-G. I uh, don't tend to do too much in PLA, PLA Plus. Um, occasionally use TPU if it needs some flex in it. Uh, so things like tracks for a uh, Wally would be something I'd do in TPU. Um, or anything that needs a little bit of sponginess to it. Now we start getting into some of the smaller items I've printed. Um, this is Wally. Wally again is animatronic. He has a little camera in here, a screen to show you battery level. Um, all the insides, there's a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino, a power board all inside so you can turn them on, control them from a web page. Um, next up is Mo. Uh, so Mo again, another robotic, so he can roll around. I can use the same controller I have for my BB-8 to control Mo. Uh, he's got little LED eyes, a uh, little siren on the top. Eve isn't, uh, isn't movable as such. Uh, but it has a light up base down the bottom, the arms will come out, the head will turn, and it's got Eve's eyes that will make sounds as well. 
um, some of my earlier projects is things like making a little animatronic head so Will Cogley was probably one of the first people that got me interested in making any kind of animatronics and he had these little eyes that you could uh, download and he had projects on how to do that so I started playing with effectively the eyes and the mouth and the teeth so this was probably my very very first attempt to try to do any kind of animatronic so more tools uh, glue gun need a glue gun you're gonna go through lots of glue lots of glue because you use lots of glue for a glue gun um, these little 3d printer pliers are fantastic I have a multitude of these if you do squeeze too hard you can break them but they're cheap as chips especially from places like Timu and Aliexpress um, so I would definitely recommend having a bunch of those I have a range of different files of like both these small size and large sizes these are great for like trying to trim areas, uh, deburr, uh, even remove some um, like some of the roughness on a 3D print. You're trying to make it a little bit, a little bit smoother. Um, a bunch of these is super helpful. An electric screwdriver, just a small one like this with interchangeable bits. Um, this is a Xiaomi, I think it is. Um, just USB chargeable, super helpful. A drill again. Um, Variable speed, both directions, uh, adjustable kind of strength, so you don't want to completely blitz the screw that goes in. Um, but having something that can, when you kind of screw in like two or three hundred screws, having something that can do that really quickly, it's super helpful. Um, just make sure you're not using that if you're going to over tighten things or risk it. Much easier to use something slightly slower. Take your time. Um, scalpels. A multitude of scalpels lots of replacement blades when they get dull replace it don't stab yourself in the foot don't drop it on your foot done that many a time unfortunately um, yeah be careful with working with these but they are a super useful tool um, I kind of have a collection of different uh, replacement bits for uh, the printers Allen keys bits for every different possible screw you could possibly imagine tools um this isn't the, the cleanest of work discs but you'll get an idea of things um solder station so effectively one with a heat gun uh ability to control the temperature of the soldering iron tip really important uh wire strippers super helpful assortment of different crimping tools um e even a lighter to be able to do some quick um heat shrink rather than having to wait for the heat gun to, to get up to temperature Every screwdriver and hex allen key type thing that you could ever possibly imagine would be in there. Um, I tend to get most of my parts from AliExpress every time I order something. So they're in different containers, so things like resistors, um, even things like eyes in here. Um, Arduino parts and electronics, speakers, bearings, lights, uh, pumps, batteries, connections, servos. Um, you name it every time I order something I'll buy more because even though it can take only a couple of weeks sometimes it's four weeks and there's nothing worse than waiting on an entire project for one little item so I generally buy more than I need so in most cases these days I can kind of get a project up and running with the stuff that I have without having to go too far into ordering new items next up is paints got a mixture of paints most of them are rust-oleum purely because it's the easiest paint for me to find locally um, a range of different colors ready to go do also have some 2k clear coat at the back uh, so if you want that really glossy hard finish a 2k clear coat's really good just be cautious of using those 2k clear coats on a lot of the metallic paints that you can get because often it will take your metallic what well, looks to be shiny and you think it's nice going to have a nice big glossy finish on top and it just turns it into a dull grey so just be cautious of those um, some of those uh, metallic paints are actually better off without a 2k clear coat if you want it to look metallic but if you need that hardness then the 2k is wonderful um, onwards and upwards sanding here's my favorite baby so you will spend your life sanding uh, when it comes to 3d printing big models just trying to get those layer lines ground down getting it as fine as possible ready from prep for paint one of these uh, effectively it's like a rattle gun type thing um, plugged into an air compressor doesn't need a huge air compressor but like one of these tanks over here 
was more than enough for it. Um, then a multitude of different grit sandpapers, anything from pretty much 200 grit right the way up through 2000 or even 3000 um, to really get that smooth finish on it. Um, I did have one of these as well. I don't know if any of you have tried them. Uh, you basically stick on a sandpaper. So when you're trying to get into those really hard to get to corners, um, the idea is to use one of these battery powered. You can just press the button and, and off it goes. Different speeds. Yeah, I didn't find any good. Um, I'm sure there's maybe some figurine models that might be useful, but it was absolutely useless when it came to the stuff I was doing. It just seemed to vibrate and not do any kind of sanding. In fact, my hand was probably more sore from holding it from than any actual effect it did uh, in terms of cleaning things up. So I know others have had success with them. This just kind of sits there like that now because I tend to do bigger objects. So things like that are great. Use these for uh, pretty much clear coat. So the 2K clear coat. Again, it's uh, compressor powered. Paint goes on top, paint comes out the front. Uh, I kind of keep them separate between those which I'm doing with colors versus um, things like spray putty, spray primer, which tends to destroy it. I'm pretty poor at actually cleaning things out afterwards. I need to get better at that. Um, sanding, these things, these sanding blocks, fantastic with a little bit of uh, sponge underneath just to make it great, but really good to make sure you've got a flat surface that you're sanding with. Um, a toolkit for different shapes. So I use this for clay sculpting, but I use it for lots of other things. So um, there's some really great fine point pieces. So if I'm trying to carve out or make sure that I haven't filled in a spray putty into a groove in uh, one of the 3D objects, then I might pick out the spray putty just to make sure it's still well defined. Um, lastly, I've got like a little airbrush. So again, if I need to do some fine details and then paints. What other sandpapers are you going to need? My very favorite sandpaper. Um, so it's a, effectively a 220 grit. It's a wet and dry. Um, in this case, comes in a 10 sheet. I get it from a local hardware store. But it is the best grit for the majority of starting work. It just cuts through nicely, doesn't rough up all the, um, the pitchy uh, plastic. Um, it seems to do a good job of taking down primer and spray putty as well. So this would be my 80% of the stuff I do is done with this sandpaper first. And then I kind of start working my way up through the wet and dries, like the 800 grit. There's 1200 grit in there as well. There's a 400, more 400. Um, we go right up to the, again, 1200, 2000s and 3000s. Uh, another hand sander, palm sander, okay. Nowhere near as good as that um, orbital, uh, orbital rattle one.